All right, today's video is about absolute value. Uh, absolute value is a term that many people have probably heard, but I want to take some time right now to just define what is absolute value, what does it mean? So what is absolute value? Absolute value is the distance a number is from zero. The distance a number is from zero. And we write absolute value using a certain notation, and that notation is two straight up and down bars. And inside these bars, you put a number. So for example, I might say, what is the absolute value of four? That's read as the absolute value of four. What it's asking us is, how far is the number four from Zero. And if I count, let's see, one, two, three, four. The number four is four spots away from zero. In the same way, it might ask us, how far is negative four from zero? Well, if I want to know how far negative four is from zero, I'm going to count. One, two, three, four. Negative four is also four away from zero. So something we need to know about absolute value is that it can never be zero. I'm sorry, it can never be a negative. It can never be a negative. And what I mean by that is that the distance, the number that it's giving you is from zero, or the absolute value of a number is always positive. It is always positive. When we think about how far negative 4 is from 0, we're going to think about it in positive terms. It is 1, 2, 3, 4 away from 0. When we think about how far away 4 is from 0, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 away. In either case, whether it's a negative number or a positive number, the absolute value of that number, or the distance it is from 0, is positive. It's not going to be a negative. So let's do a couple of examples. Let's say we have this example. The first thing we want to do is we want to write it out in words, and we also want to write it out numerically. So in words, what this is saying, I see I have the straight up and down bars on either side. This is saying the absolute value of 2, the absolute value of 2. So in my head, I'm thinking, OK, absolute value. I know that absolute value is distance from 0. And I know that absolute value is positive. So what is the absolute value of 2? Well, 2 is, let's see, 2 is 1, 2 from 0. So the absolute value of 2 is 2. Notice that the absolute value is a positive number. Let's do another example. Right here, I have the absolute value of negative 2. So the absolute value of negative 2. So I would draw a number line. Let's see, here's 0, here's negative 1, negative 2. How far is negative 2 from 0? It is 1, 2. Now remember, we said that absolute value is always positive. So what basically what's going to happen is whenever there's a number inside these bars, it's going to become a positive number. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. It is 1, 2 spots from 0. So I want you to go ahead right now. I want you to practice these four different problems. Go ahead and pause the video. Practice each problem. Write it out numerically and in words. And when you're ready, press play, and you can see the answers. All right, here are your answers. I've written them out each in words to so check that you have it correctly written out in words. Um, and here, I want you to notice that when we found the absolute value, so if I found the absolute value of negative 4, the bars dropped. The bars are no longer part of the answer. The absolute value of 4 is just 4. There are no longer any bar bars. All right, so let's go on to something a little bit more complicated. Let's say when we're evaluating absolute value bars. So what I mean by evaluating is that we have to perform some sort of operations. There's a couple of key points that are important for us to know. The first one is that all operations in 
inside absolute value bars. All operations inside the absolute value bars are done first. The absolute value is taken when everything is simplified. And I'll explain what that means as we go through some examples. The absolute value is taken when everything is simplified. The second key point that I want to remember is that anything on the outside of our absolute value bars done last. And I'll explain what that means as well and why we do that. Let's go ahead and get down those key points. And if you need to, pause the video. OK, so let's take this example. Now, the first thing we need to remember is that these absolute value bars, in some ways, are like a grouping symbol. So if you think back to GEMDAS, we always do grouping symbols first. So what that means is we need to finish or evaluate what's inside these grouping symbols first. So I'm going to go ahead and bring down my absolute value bars. 2 plus negative 7. Well, 2 plus negative 7 is negative 5. I want you to notice, I didn't do 2 plus positive 7. I did what was inside first, 2 plus negative 7. Now, I'm looking at this, and I have everything inside simplified. Once you get to this point where you're, the number is simplified, once you are left with only a number, Then you take the absolute value. And I'm going to use A, V to represent absolute value. Then you take the absolute value. So because we've done 2 plus negative 7, we now know that the absolute, it's going to be the absolute value of negative 5. And what is the absolute value of fi negative 5? It is 5. So our answer is positive 5. And remember, whatever you get inside your absolute value bar is going to become positive. Because when we're looking at, how far is negative 5 from 0, we're going to think of it in terms of a positive number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Let's do another example. Let's take an example like number 4. Now remember, anything inside the absolute value bars, we need to simplify first. So I'm going to bring down my bars, and I'm going to go ahead and simplify. Now, I need to follow order of operations with inside my absolute value bars as well, because these are kind of like parentheses in a way, just a type of parenthesis or a type of grouping symbol. So I'm going to erase those so we don't think they're parentheses. These are absolute value bars, so I'm going to bring them down. I know that I need to do multiplication before I can add, so I'm going to do 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15, and bring down my positive 12. I cannot take the absolute value yet because I still have simplifying to do. Negative 15 plus negative 12 gives me a negative 3. Now that I'm left with just a number inside my absolute value bars, just a number, I can take the absolute value. So how far is negative 3 from 0? Well, it is 1, 2, 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Notice the bars are not, no longer there because the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So we have dropped the bars, and our answer is just positive 3. Let's do example 4. I see some simplifying I need to do. So first thing I'm going to look for is, OK, I need to simplify inside my absolute value bars first. So I'm going to say, according to order of operations, which I need to follow inside these bars, what do I do first? Should I subtract, or should I multiply? Well, I need to multiply before I subtract. So I'm going to bring down my 12 minus 2 times negative 3 is a negative 6. I can't take the absolute value yet. I still need to evaluate this. 12 minus negative 6 is a positive 18. 
Now that I have a number all by itself inside my absolute value bars, I can go ahead and take the absolute value of 18. So again, how far is positive 18 from 0? It is 18 away, so the absolute value of 18 is positive 18. Let's do two more examples. All right, now there's something different going on in this one right here. Notice that now we have some stuff going on on the outside of the absolute value bars. Now, when we follow order of operations, we always do the grouping symbols first. Remember that absolute value bars are a type of grouping symbol. So what I need to do first is I need to evaluate inside the absolute value bars first. I'm going to go ahead and bring down everything that is on the outside and just bring it down. So 4 minus the absolute value of 5 plus 12 is 17. Now, once I have a number alone inside my absolute value bars, I can evaluate it. So what is the absolute value of 17? Well, the absolute value of 17 is 17. I still need to bring down my 4 minus. Notice here that these bars dropped. They went away. They are no longer there. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, well, let's evaluate this. 4 minus 17, what is that? That gives me a negative 13. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, we said that absolute value could never be negative. That is true, but this didn't give us the absolute value. What this is saying is we found the absolute value of 17. But because we have this 4 minus on the outside, it's okay for our answer to be negative because we did that after we took the absolute value of 17. You should also notice that it ended up this was a minus 17 because there was a minus on the outside, and we brought that down. Look back here. Did we take the absolute value of 17? Did we make sure that what came out of these absolute value bars was positive? Yes. So 4 minus 17 is negative 13. All right, let's do one or a couple more examples. So let's take a look at this one. Again, I have some stuff going on outside, and I need to evaluate my absolute value bars first. So I'm going to bring down the 5 minus the absolute value. Now, what does it mean when this negative 2 is touching this negative 3? That means multiply. So I'm going to do five, negative 2 times 8, which is negative 16. Now my number inside my absolute value is simplified. So I can go ahead and take the absolute value of that. I'm going to bring down my 5 minus. What is the absolute value of negative 16? It is positive 16. And if you want to write a plus 16 here, you can. Now, I brought down this minus because it was there to begin with. So this is saying 5 minus 16, which is negative 11. I'm going to do a couple more examples that are a little bit tricky. All right, let's take these four examples. Remember, always do what is inside of your absolute value bars first. Anything on the outside you need to bring down. So what I notice right here is that there's a negative on the outside of these absolute value bars. I'm going to bring that down. It's saying the absolute value of 6. Now, what can we assume is right here? Remember, these are kind of like parentheses. What would we normally assume is right in front of these absolute value bars? It's invisible. We can't see it. Okay, that is a negative 1. So let's bring down a negative 1. And I still have the, and I'm going to write it a little bit bigger so you can tell the difference between a bar and a 1, the absolute value of 6. So this is where it becomes slightly tricky. We should see that this negative 1 is touching the absolute value bar, which is right here. And we'll put that in a different color. Now, absolute value bars are like grouping symbols. So when a negative 1 touches an absolute value bar, it means multiplication. In the same way that if you had negative 1, parentheses, negative 6, that would be multiplying. You would know to multiply here. When you have a negative 1 touching an absolute value bar, it also means to multiply. So what we should do when we get to this step, and we want to drop our absolute value bars, is let's bring down our negative 1. But to remind us that we need to multiply, we should take the absolute value of 6, but write it with a parenthesis. That's going to remind us to multiply. Now, did I take the absolute value of positive 6? Yes, it's positive 6. 
but we still need to do negative 1 times 6, which is a negative 6. Let's take this example. Again, I just have a negative in front of my absolute value bars, but remember, that is an imaginary 1 right there. It's, a, it's really saying negative 1 times the absolute value of negative 7. So I'm going to bring down my negative 1. And I'm also going to, and I'm going to put bigger lines so I know it's a negative 7, bring down my negative 7. Now, what is the absolute value of negative 7? The absolute value of negative 7 is 7. I have to remember that when this number touches this absolute value bar, that means multiply. So I'm going to use parentheses to remind myself of that. Now, it's OK to change these absolute value bars into parentheses because we've done everything inside of here. We just had to take the absolute value of negative 7, which was positive 7. And what is negative 1 times 7? That is negative 7. We're going to do two more examples. Let's take example number 10. I have the absolute value of negative 6 squared. Remember, you do everything inside the absolute value bars first and then evaluate everything on the outside. So I notice that there's nothing to evaluate on the inside of negative 6. So I'm going to go ahead and take the absolute value of negative 6, which is positive 6. Now, absolute value bars are like parentheses. So if I had something like 6 and then an exponent on the outside, I know that I need to take this 6 to the second power. So when I dropped my absolute value bars and I changed my negative 6 to a 6, I got to use parentheses to remind myself to evaluate that. 6 squared is 36. Remember, that means 6 times 6. Let's do one more example. Now, on the inside of this, I have negative 6 squared. That's all on the inside. So in my calculator, I can legal, literally, literally plug in negative 6 squared, and I'm going to get negative 36. Now, i got to take the absolute value of this still. Notice I brought down my bars, because this wasn't simplified. I had to simplify that first. What is the absolute value of negative 36? It is positive 36, and I've dropped the bars. All right, what I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video. Try practice set 1, which is on the screen. When you're ready, press play, and I will give you the answers as well as the work that you should have shown. All right, here are the answers to practice set number one. Go ahead and check your answers and see if they're correct and look at the work. Write down any questions that you may have. All right, and here is practice set number two. Go ahead and pause the video. Try practice set number two, and when you're ready, press play to see the answers. All right, here are the answers to practice number two. If you got anything wrong, check your work. Look at the work that's provided, and write down any questions that you have.